Ellie's deep and multi-layered character compellingly contextualizes the rest of The Last of Us by anchoring its story in the human spirit. Gone Home's setting reveals the complexity that lies at the center of everyday family life. Mass Effect's brilliantly realized world brings the struggle of its characters to the forefront. If you spend any amount of time reading reviews of video games, you've probably heard things just about identical to the cliches I've just spouted. I'm not trying to single these games out for any particular reason, they're just a few examples of games that games journalists and players identify alike as being artistic. Reviewers usually observe, by using way too many adjectives and adverbs, that these games use theming, character development, and other techniques to enhance their total artistic packages. These games have a lot in common with other types of art like movies and books, and they do a lot of the same things these other media do. Games have movies in them because they have cutscenes. Games have music in them because they have soundtracks. Games have writing in them because they use text and dialogue. It's possible to identify games as being collections of these type of media, but that would be misleading, because games have one defining feature, a reason that they're called games. That's because they have gameplay. They're interactive. Movies are also named after one defining characteristic. They're called movies because they're collections of moving pictures, movies. Yes, they do have performances in them, and yes, they also have music in them, but only one thing sets movies apart from other media, and in turn, that's what defines it as a medium. I'm not really going to get into cinematic games, movie games, and that whole issue because it's not really the point of this video and because it's already been done by instigative journalism. What I want to address is that when games are identified as art, it's usually because of things within the game that could also be accomplished in another medium like film or writing. Themes, plot, symbols, characters. There are spectacular examples of these done well in video games, but there are also examples all across the spectrum of media. Only games have gameplay. Now I realize this seems like a pretty trite entry into the canon of Ah, video games are games and shouldn't be movies! Blee blue fucking blah 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 This opinion's been expressed already in so many different ways that it's not even interesting anymore. The complaint usually goes that games are so busy trying to be art that they forget to be games. Even though it's pretty played out, I'm sympathetic to this, but I think it misses the mark. The the reason gameplay is so critical to games isn't because they're games and not art, but because a game's mechanics can't be divorced from its value as art. When you study a painting, watch a movie, or listen to a song, you're not just taking inventory of whatever content's there, you're experiencing something that could move you to emotion, thought, or boredom depending on the intent and quality of execution. A movie script is not artistically identical to the movie itself. Completely inseparable from the experience of that movie is the pacing of the movie, the techniques of cinematography used, the directorial choices. That stuff matters when evaluating a movie as an artistic experience. And the exact same thing is true of games. You can't just throw out a game's gameplay when evaluating it as art and instead focus on a game's story and themes and character development and symbols and all the other things that people tend to focus on when talking about games as art. The mechanics of the game itself are integral to what makes it an artistic experience. This is probably the biggest problem I have with Adam Sessler and to a lesser extent people like Aaron Signal. There's a lot of attention paid to the more literary artistic qualities of games, how resonant its themes and message were, how believable its characters or world were. Most of the time, the only lip service that gameplay gets is in supplement to the literary qualities. For example, Walking through Gone Home's house evokes mystery and trepidation, and manipulating the everyday objects inside the house give you a picture for the home's atmosphere and the state of the family. Yes, games can tell stories, and they can tell them very well. They can even be Gesamtskunstwerk, complete works of art in which gameplay does complement the other aspects of the game. But a game can be art even on the merits of its gameplay alone. Feelings of satisfaction, discovery, frustration that come up during gameplay are aesthetically relevant values that games can pursue, and gameplay alone can achieve them. I just don't buy that the emotions called to mind by Demon Souls punishing gameplay or Fallout's interesting decisions are somehow less artistic than the emotions invoked by a piece of work you don't interact with. Most frustrating are the arguments that go, video games aren't quite high art yet, but they're getting there. The Nostalgia Critic made a really long, horrendously painful to watch video that argued this exactly. Video games aren't becoming art, they always were. They're only not art if you think of art as social commentary, illusions, themes. There's more kinds of art than the stuff you talked about in English class. Let's put our academic hats on for a second and look at a paper written by a film studies professor from Indiana University, Margaret Bruder. It's called Aestheticizing Violence, or How to Do Things with Style. 
The condensed version is that movies like the kind Quentin Tarantino or John Woo make turn violent spectacle into a type of art all their own, without any loftier political, social, or thematic aims. Style becomes substance. Gameplay is the same, and like pure style before it, it's neglected by critics because few have found comfortable ways of discussing it. It's easier to write up a cold inventory of a game's mechanics than to talk about what certain gameplay experiences mean to a player. This is why so many reviewers talk your ear off about themes and characters and story and just give a quick little list of how the game plays, whether it's good or not. Thankfully, there are some people who are able to discuss gameplay comfortably. This is what makes Matthew Matosis and Mr. Beatung some of the best games critics working today, if you want to call making YouTube videos working. They take analysis of games seriously, but in their critiques they don't just ape film criticism like all too many critics and analysts do, the sort I made a video about a while ago. Where a lesser critic would drone on about the thematic implications of X, these guys actually take the gameplay seriously, and not just as entertainment or a distraction from a game's value, but as a part of it. And what's more, they're not fucking computers. Good criticism isn't babbling on like an automaton reaching for all the biggest words on the tippy top shelf so that you can sound as smart as possible when discussing things you don't understand. It's having a unique critical voice with actually interesting and novel opinions. I'd be willing to go as far as to say that Mr. Beatung is the closest thing gaming has to a Pauline Kale. I just hope that people who play games can start thinking about them as art without separating that from how they play. And I also hope that wannabe critics can see that there's a middle ground between taking an inventory of a game's features and going full-on humorless English 101. That's all for the Brutalcom Network today. I promise you'll be back to your diet of regular shit-ironic content soon. This is Brutalcom Powder, signing off.